Hello and welcome to the Empowering Family Caregivers video show. Uh, today is, oh my goodness, Friday, May 20th. Time flies so fast. Um, I am Susan Vida, the co-founder of eCareDiary.com and your host of the show today. We are focusing on therapeutic humor and who more than caregivers who deal with so many aspects of caregiving and elder care, who more needs to incorporate humor into, into their lives than, than you all? Um, and we have a very special guest today to talk about humor and how to find humor in your lives and how to make it more therapeutic for yourself. Um, Alan Klein, thank you for joining us. Great to be here. Uh, he's all the way here from San Francisco, and he came from that beautiful weather into this uh, uh, <laughs> little rainy weather here in New York City today. Alan Klein is an award-winning professional speaker on the subject of therapeutic humor. He is a former hospice volunteer, home health aide, and director of the Life, Death, Transitions Institute in San Francisco. He is the author of 17 books. You've been busy, haven't you? <laughs> <Get> <laughs> you don't have enough fingers to that. <laughs> um, including uh, The Healing Power of Humor, which I have here. And his latest book called uh, The Courage, Learning to Laugh When You Feel Like Crying. Um, haven't we all wanted to do that when during those uh, most, I think, difficult moments of our lives? And uh, I think that um, you are so, uh, and we're very honored to have you because we really need to find some humor. And I want to talk about all of that. And you can learn more about Alan Klein on his website, www.alankline.com. You know what, Susan? I think you should spell that because Alan sure. spelled about five ways and Klein okay. is spelled about we'll five do. ways. So it's uh, <laughs> Alan, A L L E N K Klein, K L E I N, A L L E N K. K-L-E-I-N dot com. Got it. Thank you for that. Well, let's start by asking you, I, I want to ask you about your keynote speeches and you teach workshops on how people can use humor to deal with very difficult situations. Um, how, how and when did you get motivated to do this? Well, it started over 30 years ago. People would say it was a tragic situation. Indeed, it was somewhat tragic. Uh, my wife got a terminal liver disease when she was 31 and she passed away at 34. Mm -hmm. And needless oh to say, it was a difficult time for us. And yeah. we had a 10-year-old daughter when she passed. I have a 10-year-old daughter. Yeah. Um, and it was a very difficult time. There was no hospice at the time. There was no liver transplants at the time. And it was like, how could I get on with my life? How can I live through this you right. know it's like my life partner is gone right. so it was very sad very upsetting times but my wife Ellen always had a great sense of humor uh, and I'll give you a, one idea of it she had a copy of Playgirl magazine with the male nude centerfold <laughs> uh, and she said Alan I really like this uh, picture this month Can you put it on the wall by the bed over here and I said Ellen it's hospital it's a little risque for that and she said well maybe you're right she said why don't you get a leaf from the plant and cover up that part <laughs> and I did that Susan and things are fine for the first day fine uh -huh. for the second day but by the third day the leaf starts shriveling up oh my gosh <laughs> and we would look at the picture and we would start to laugh That's and great. I realized looking back that little bit of laughter wasn't a lot yeah. but it helped us rise above the situation gave us a different perspective gave us a little reprieve from what we were going through yeah. So after she died, I, it was the time Norman Cousins was talking about humor and healing himself. And I thought, I remember that moment with Ellen, and I remembered how it, it really did help us right. through. You know, it wasn't a lot of laughter, but it helped us get over that yeah. just for a moment. And I thought, you know, humor is so important to help us cope in situations, and nobody talks about it in more serious uh, death and dying, serious illness. Most people don't talk about it. Oh, In fact, people yeah. feel guilty right. talking about it. Yeah. And I thought this is a subject that nobody's explored. And I, I guess I honored her by going back to school, learning about humor, uh, start writing the books, and got a master's degree in human, H-U-M-A-N, development. And my um, thesis turned into my first book, The Healing Power of Humor. 
That's wonderful. Um, did I, I don't know if I reminded the audience, you can find both of these books, uh, The Healing Power of Humor and Learning to Laugh When You Feel Like Crying on Amazon.com and any of the major bookstores like Barnes & Noble, uh, mm -hmm. Borders and, and such. And we're adding them to our website too. We have a caregiver book section, so these will be added today. So oh, good. So excited. people can go there and yes. get it. Easy. Well, what what a, an inspiring story. Now, your wife seems to have had a sense of humor. Um, you know, not everybody, you know, humor doesn't come naturally to a lot of people, and particularly when they're depressed by an, an illness like that. Mm -hmm. um, what, mm -hmm. what do you suggest for them? Well, first I suggest listen to the situation you know there's humor all around but of course when say your loved one is ill often yeah. you don't see it you don't but often it will come out of a situation yeah. I mean I know in um, you know those hospital gowns they give you I mean that's funny the way they don't even like cover you up in the back True. at funerals people look in the coffin and go oh, he never looked so good <laughs> you know I mean humor's there but we're so stressed out yeah um, that we don't see it and yet humor and tears I think are extremely close yeah. And so if you can laugh, you could also cry in that moment. I think, I don't know what your listeners believe in, God, whatever, but whatever is the higher power, I think, has given us a sense of humor to help us cope with what life hands us. I couldn't agree more, and I'm sure our audience agrees with you. Um, let's talk about your recent book, um, Learning to Laugh When You Feel Like Crying. And um, my husband and I have been in that situation, um, you know, watching my, my father-in-law pass away. My grandfather just recently passed away and a lot of issues around there. Um, you you uh, talk about how to embrace life after loss and tell us what it, you know, what you say in the book about that and, and why you wrote about that. Well, I wrote about it because my cousin, who was just like a sister to me and never had a sister, passed away two years ago and she had an incredible sense of humor and she she always lived life to the fullest mm -hmm. when she went on vacation I was always amazed she would come back like seven in the morning so she can get to work by nine I mean she didn't want to miss a moment of, of life mm -hmm. and she would be flying got on planes when they LaGuardia Airport there was no Kennedy and they had a little observation deck yes. and you would wave you know and I'd say Bernie's how can you get on a plane, aren't you afraid of crashing? And she said no, and she said, but if it crashed, I want it to crash on my way home from the vacation, not before, because I don't <laughs> want to miss the vacation. So she was the inspiration for this book. Oh, that's great. And w the other inspiration was after my wife died, I looked for a simple book about loss and grief. Yeah. A book that I could just open and like comfort me, inspire me, help me to get to the next day or the next moment. Right. There wasn't. There was. 300 page books about what grief was and how to handle it and what right. you go through and I thought, it's not what I want so right. I wrote it and it basically has uh, learning to laugh when you feel like crying has mm -hmm. five stages yeah. and the first one is just acknowledging the loss yeah. it hurt, loss hurts and you've right. got to acknowledge that this is yeah tell us about those stages because I, I think none of us really know about you know, what we're going to go through after it happens you right. know uh, John and I were kind of caught off guard with our feelings and we were going in and out of different emotions. So can you tell exactly. us about that? Well, Kubler-Ross also, she did death and dying workshops and talked about the five yeah. stages, yeah. which is depression and anger until yeah. you get to acceptance. Right. So she had five stages. I wanted to have five stages. Okay. Well, what but are mine is stages? learning to laugh. So it's uh, learning, uh, I'm sorry, losing that you acknowledge you've lost something and this right. is going to hurt. Right. But then the second one, I think, is maybe the most important, is that you can learn from this experience. Yeah. Like, you know, I would ask you, did you learn something by going through that experience of yeah. somebody close to you dying? Oh, for and, sure. Yeah, and for my wife, I mean, I my whole life changed. Yeah. And and I and I and I'm more spiritual and I'm more giving and I and I just I just appreciate things more and I realize that. You know, I live in San Francisco. There could be an earthquake. I could be gone like that. And right. so that moment is so precious. It so I learned that. It makes you really that. appreciate life and the people in your life and the length of time you have them in your life. Right. I mean, and so I learned. So yeah. loss teaches us a lot. Yeah. And, and I think people don't realize that. And if you can go while you're dealing with the, being a caregiver, what am I learning from this? Am I learning yeah. patience? You know. So learning and losing learning, letting go. Because if you're carrying... Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't experience that grief, yeah. 
Right. But if you're carrying it around for years, I think two people have then lost. Both the person who's gone and your life too has been right. uh, altered. So letting go, and once you start to letting go, you can start to see what life offers. And that's where the humor comes in and you, and you could live life fully and hopefully laugh again. Wonderful, wonderful. Those are great stages. Yeah, I, I mean, to thanks. look forward to. They're, they're um, I think, a, a more positive way of looking at um, our, you know, recovery. And, and that recovery process can be short or long for... Yeah, everybody is different. Right. You know, you can't, you can't... I mean, I was a hospice volunteer and I'd work with a woman and she was grieving for like three years, you know, yeah. and she couldn't get over her mother's death Yeah. until, um, you know, she finally grew out of it. So some people three months, some people three years. Yes. Who knows? So uh, let's, let's talk about now uh, your first book, which is The Healing Power of Humor. Uh, and I'm going to read the, uh, the byline here, Techniques for Getting Through Loss, Setbacks, Upsets, Disappointments, Difficulties, uh, tribulations, trials, and all that not so funny stuff. So this is not just for um, death situations. No, this is everyday situations, yes. and there is 14 techniques of how to increase your sense of humor. So it's traffic jams, it's uh, your child uh, breaking their elbow right. or their arm, getting right. a dent in your car, getting a traffic ticket. You know, and I got a traffic ticket last year, uh, and I thought nobody could ruin my life. Just because I got a traffic ticket, right. I could still enjoy my day. And then yeah. I start laughing because I saw the humor, and I realized that I'm over 70, and it's my first traffic right. ticket ever, oh and now I'm an adult. You know, I got a traffic ticket, I'm an adult. <laughs> and that amused me, and I started to laugh. So okay. yeah, that Healing Power of Humor has 14 techniques, how to increase your sense of humor. Thank you so much. You know, I, I could use a sense of humor sometimes because I'm going through a pregnancy, and I don't always feel very pleasant, and yeah. I get angry very easily. I think it's because of my hormones. Just visualize the... <laughs> Two, you said you're having yeah. twins, the two twins. I need to read this book. All Seriously, right. thank you so much <laughs> for this gift. Um, now, in your in your workshops and your keynote speeches, I think we only have a minute or two, um, you go over the letters L-A-U-G-H, which spell laugh, and yeah. what do those letters stand for? Okay, so the first one I already told you from the second, but the last yeah. book, let go. Right. Let go, you have to let go. You can't. If you're angry, upset, frustrated, you can't find laughter yes. in anything. A is attitude. Things are the way they are, and it's our attitude. I mean, Viktor Frankl talked about changing his attitude in a concentration camp. Yeah. And he credits it in part with surviving. Yes. The U is Y-O-U. I cheated a little. Okay. Y-O-U. You. you need to go do it. You right. need to change your attitude. You need to let go. G is go do it, which has the 14 techniques how to do it. Great. And H is open your humor eyes and ears and look and listen for humor. It's all around. I'll give you one example. I was in a laundromat and it said, when the machine stops, remove all your clothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which I did. <laughs> Great. I love that. <laughs> Alan Klein, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. This it's has been, been such great. a pleasure. Way too short, but yes. great. Yes, and, um, and please read his books. I think you're going to find laughter, I think, uh, just by reading and turning the pages. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you to our audience for tuning in and join us next week, Friday at two o'clock. Take care.